Hello and welcome to a roadmap and monthly report update for Star Citizen. What are the plans for this year's major releases on the road to Alpha 4.0? What have Cloud Imperium been working on over the last few weeks and what are they focused on now in terms of development plans and for the Persistent Universe? We know that the testing of Alpha 3.17.2, the Siege of Orison, and Alpha 3.18 has all begun, but feature work goes well beyond this with work on 4.0 as well. Cloud Imperium's release plans have changed for 2022 and there are some major milestones that they plan on hitting. Dependent on how well the 3.18 testing phase goes, the current roadmap plans for the road to Alpha 4.0 and the release sort of expectations for patches are the end of Q2 patch, so the end of June patch, is going to be Alpha 3.17.2. So part of the 3.17 branch, testing on that's going to start shortly. And around that same time, so at the end of June or thereabouts, they're planning to release a test build of Alpha 3.18. So that's going to start with the Evocati, then eventually move on to wider PTU. The expectation for the testing cycle for 3.18 is going to be two to three months of testing. That's a huge testing window. Um, and it's going to have a targeted live release at the end of Q3, so the end of September. Cloud Imperium still plan on a Q4 end of the year patch. So 3.19 is still a planned live release by the end of the year. But Cloud Imperium also want to potentially have a super early test build of Alpha 4.0 to Evocati by the end of the year as well. So basically around when uh, that 3.19 patch goes live is the sort of rough idea. They then, bam, also drop this 4.0 Evocati sort of patch. Now, it's very likely that that 4.0 build that early test build will actually slip into Q1 2023 before it even starts testing. And they want it to have a similar testing window to the Alpha 3.18 branch, which would be two to three months at sort of at least uh, before they push it to live. But a rough target for live build for 4.0 by the end of Q1 2023. And yes, that patch is planning to contain server mashing and that new star system pyro and assumedly jump points to get you there and a huge amount of other stuff too. We have targets, we have goals, we have a direction. Let's check out a summary and highlights of the Persistent Universe monthly report released June 2022 or released a few hours ago for me. Uh, the UK ships team have been improving the damage maps on all ships in preparation for the salvage mechanics. Development also continued on several vehicles. An unannounced ground vehicle processed into final art and design while a new ship entered the early grey box stage with work on the cockpit and dashboard progressing well. What could these interesting unannounced ships and vehicles be? Well, I'm looking forward to them, whatever they are. Uh, the Banu Merchantmen continue to move through Grey Box, where they focused on the ship's exterior art. The team are also currently working on the underside and the look and feel of its wings. The Argo SRV tow truck began production and is nearing white box complete with the final white box review schedule soon really looking forward to seeing these sort of like large-scale tractor beam ships um, actually come into service in the us the team there continued building the drake corsair with the interior major passes were completed on the turret airlock and manned turret cabin while most of the crew quarters were finished including the captain's quarters near the cockpit the entire cargo hold was blocked out and details are currently being added the main airlock and staging room on the starboard side of the ship was also completed on the exterior Progress was made on the grey box, including the nacelles, main and retro thrusters. Development began on the landing gear and remote turrets too. Great progress was made on quantum travel boost, primarily making it feel right as ships accelerate and attempt to maintain a heading. This feature also supports points of interest, allowing pilots to fly towards highlighted destinations. The team are also continuing to update persistent tech features to use the new systems and fixing problems along the way usually connected to systems such as streaming, networking and persistence. General balance work continued too, including a pass on general item health to stop ships from shutting down from explosions. They also continued to balance the refueling mechanic, deciding on the volume of fuel the Star Fairer can carry and the sizes of ships it can refuel. The setup and balance of the new ground vehicle physics is progressing well. The team now have a baseline handling and are laying out the remaining dependencies 
abilities to make them game ready. VFX concept art began working on the Quantum Travel rework. This included storyboarding the gameplay requirements at different stages of the process, such as spawning up, entering and exiting. They're currently investigating how it could look in engine. The features team have been updating the scanning feature, improving the visual effects when triggering a ping wave while on foot, and how it highlights different contacts. Interactable items and points of interest critical to mission progression will be highlighted too. The team is also increasing the amount of information gathered from scanning objects. For example, a door will reveal its current state and if it can be affected via hacking, NPCs and other players will show contents of their physical inventories and player corpses will reveal their cause of death. The feature team said hooking up all this data can be quite a time consuming task as it requires a lot of data mining of different systems and their variables. Part of the work is ensuring the addition of future data will be frictionless. The team also created a model for serializing damage maps online which is required for salvaging. The client is able to make accurate predictions but can also rewind and replay applications of hits on the damage map. The server will still send the full map to the client when required but this prediction will keep the need to send full data to a minimum. Narrative continued to work with design on a handful of new missions and initiatives. This included discussing new mission archetypes and tackling the new player experience to devise a system to introduce new players to the game's various mechanics. That has been well needed in the game for a long time. Starter missions or um, sort of signposting two missions and different roles and job types in game and introducing you to them appropriately and getting you on board with them and getting you to test them out to see if it's something that you want to do. The UI team refracted some back-end code to support the persistent tech that will come online in Alpha 3.18. Uh, various bugs and issues were fixed with Arena Commander and Star Marines game modes, largely due to the huge amount of feedback from players. Improvements were also made to Racing Mode, which is going to um, be in an upcoming release. Locations and environments. The locations team have been working on the Reclaimer space missions and derelict Reclaimer settlement. They're currently polishing and bug fixing in preparation for their release, which will complete it, the initial proof of concept for the derelict settlements. The next stage is to take the proof of concept and see how much more depth can be added with variations to both environmental art and level design. They're also looking to add more module and habitation variations, more missions with different modifiers and potentially new gameplay elements. The 600i and Mercury derelict settlements, which will be located on Daymar, have progressed well over the last few weeks. The level design team are currently looking at what the environment art team has done in preparation for adding missions and AI. The rework of Lawville's cityscape is very much ongoing and they've moved into production from concept and pre-production phases. Finally, for locations, the building interiors mentioned in last time's report entered the concept phase. The locations team said we're still in early days and are discussing how best to organize the conception so that concept art, environment art and level design all work together in the most efficient way. We're also defining what we want to tackle in the proof of concept and what should our target be. Everyone here is eager to tackle this challenge and find a way to add pockets of gameplay directly inside landing zones. Very exciting there. Uh, the lighting team continues to support the Siege of Horizon mission, which we're going to see in 3.17.2. They said the playable space of mission is massive, which means a lot of lighting work goes into covering the whole area to provide an interesting, unique atmosphere at night and day, while also ensuring player visibility on objectives and AI. Integration of the Mighty Bridge tool into the editor was completed. This has allowed them to deploy Vegetation Scattering version 1 into their tool set, which will allow the teams to deploy vegetation without collisions, brushes, and entities on planetary surfaces and objects. This will be especially useful for derelict settlements and outposts, but will still be used across many persistent universe locations. The next step is to develop a tool for creating crash ships, um, craters, and tails in the ground in less time but at a higher fidelity. The procedural location creation tool is also progressing well. The foundation is now a lot stronger and the team have begun creating basic layouts. They've also moved to supporting corridors and corridor loops as well as supporting the various required templates, space stations, caves, underground facilities, etc. The team's current goal is to get version 1 to the designers and artists so they can gather feedback and get it production ready. Graphics and engine updates. So the Gen 12 renderer has 
continue to get various updates. They've enabled render cube maps, support for fog volumes and other render nodes, a new reflection buffer too. Um, there's been a ton of efficiency improvements. The porting of planet ground fog was completed and the Gen 12 ports of atmospheric and volumetric clouding rendering have now commenced. Additional improvements to planet train height map rendering and spherical cloud and planet train shadow rendering were made too. They've also improved scheduling for CPU usage. They've added a rope pulley as an example of an, a dynamic entity. They've enabled more stages and systems to work with Vulcan. There were many, many rendered to texture improvements. They've also continued updating shaders with experimental improvements to the hair color model and wear version 2 ones. And what else have we got? Work on damage maps continued with a focus on debris creating its own map based on the parent map. They also implemented an interface for querying damage within an area and persistent snapshots, as well as optimizations for processing hits. Boom! That's it for your monthly report update today. And we now have a clear direction for Star Citizen's development and its patch releases for the Persistent Universe on the road to Star Citizen Alpha 4.0 for around the next sort of year-ish. But what do you think? What could that other unannounced vehicle be? Are you looking forward to more Banu Merchantman updates later this year? Are you excited for Alpha 3.17.2 or 3.18 or just the road to 4.0 in general and the sort of progress that Cloud Imperium are making? What about the new Siege of Orison dynamic event coming up? Are you sort of super excited about this and being able to play this in game? Or are you waiting for Star Citizen to be sort of much more complete before jumping in? Do you think Star Citizen is starting to make more and more progress faster and hitting these sort of major milestones with full persistence, server meshing, the new Den 12 renderer stuff? Will it all open the floodgates to new content? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Hello, it's me, the Queen. It's my Platinum Jubilee this year, and safety and security are paramount. Lots of people ask me why we need a Queen and NordVPN. I defend the world with my scepter and crown, preventing those who do it harm from carrying out their evil deeds, channeling the power of NordVPN.com forward slash board gamer, and my divine right, I can overcome any obstacle, and so can you, by using the links below. To get great deals and better internet accessibility, security, and encryption acidosity. I don't know what that word was that I was trying to say, but I am the queen! I will never be defeated! Just like NordVPN.com sword slash board gamer. That wasn't the queen at all. It was me. It was board gamer. I've got to say this at the end, actually now, just in case someone says I'm impersonating the queen. Try to get her, but she was too busy. She says got like a busy weekend or something. Every month we have a ship giveaway. For June, we're giving away the newly released RSI Scorpius Heavy Fighter. This is a two-seater X-Wing styled ship with a powerful loadout and a turret that can move from the top to the bottom of the ship, giving it a much better range of firing arcs. To be in for a chance of winning that, comment on any of my videos made during this month. More details in the description below. Please also consider supporting the channel by becoming a member with the join button under my videos, or becoming a Patreon, or even donating with a thanks button or donations in the descriptions below. Star Citizen is getting more and more flesh on its bones, and there's always news coming out, and we love to cover that, and we're only able to do that because of all of you watching, and all the amazing people that go the extra mile. Whether it's commenting, sharing our videos, chucking money at us, or whatever, thank you so much. I hope you have a great June, please take care, and I'll see you in the verse.